The Book of Recollections, Episode 26, Trial by Fire, by Dysylvania. Now, I know what you're thinking. You've probably had enough of vampires, blood fights, constant chasing and uh, all that flirting. I hear you. So how about you let little old me, your humble book of recollections, take you to someplace new, warmer, exciting. Pax, accompanied by Adam and Shaq, had reached the outskirts of the Redlands. The three emissaries greeted their first encounter with an orc in a diplomatic manner, but seeing as their efforts were being shunned, Pax then challenged the orc to a duel, with Adam closely keeping an eye on their surroundings, while Shaq was cunningly planning a way to defeat the orc. To Pax's belief, the duel rules were simple. No armor, no magic, just mano a mano. But after throwing a few punches, he realized that the orc still had his armor on, rendering his blow inefficient and only ending up bloodied on the ground. Pax brushed it off and decided to adopt the orc's definition of a fair fight. But the orc was too strong, knocking the king unconscious with his punches. A boisterous lightning storm was brewing in the distance, slowly approaching the fighters. Shaq stepped into the battle, trying to negotiate with the orcs unfazed by the fuming tempest which he would so often see while growing up. But the orc threatened them and their dirty magic with the legion of unseen hands. A brutal force in the Red Kingdom who, as far as Shaq was aware, were able to track down and punish magic users. Meanwhile, Adam tried to bring Pax back to his senses, urging him to call on Isari to meet them. So they decided to camp there for the night and wait for backup to arrive. Towards sunrise, as Shaq was standing guard, Isari found their way to them. Shaq wanted to engage, but due to Haechi's blessing, felt unnaturally warm and friendly towards her, no longer seeing her as a threat, which he found quite irritable and confusing. After greeting the others, she accidentally burns all of the party's possessions, including water supplies and a tent, while trying to explain to Pax the consequences of her new ascended form. Concerned about the sandstorm approaching, Isari swiftly procured passage for the entire group and, making use of her ascended status, she helped the party pass the entrance guards who bowed before her but cussed the three emissaries, while they quickly made their way towards the caravan. The Redlands were a place where survival came at the mercy of an unforgiving climate. The air heavy with heat, pressed down like a weight, becoming hotter as the sun rose. The land was scorched, a wasteland of cracked, barren soil that gave way to sand dunes towards the further west. The caravan filled with orcs, asimars, or genasis, all bearing the scars of the land, was preparing to set off. Isari then greeted two Asimars wearing colorful bandanas, letting them know they would be traveling to Ramidava so they would direct her and the other three Greenspring folk to the right carriage. Everyone seemed to respect or be in awe of Isari, praising to the Ascended, even trying to touch her in order to get Lumino's blessing or even allow their physical bodies to get burned so they could ascend. But Shaq brutally shoved whoever tried to lay hands on her, in his mind protecting her and doing an act of service. Pax, on the other hand, showed interest towards an orc who was tied to the wagon and dragged through the desert. He soon found out that he was a former high priest of Ramidava who refused to marry Emperor Zalmoxis's daughters, so he was condemned to be dragged to death through the desert. 
Pax discovered that to get to marry one of the emperor's daughters, first the suitor would be put to a test of literal fire in Germas, Kuptorul, a place so scorching hot it would instantly burn anyone. In hopes of receiving assistance and guidance, Isari freed the orc, who immediately made a run for the desert, but was stopped dead in his tracks by the ascended. But the orc would not hear of this arrangement, fearing not only for his life, but for the ones he would be helping, should the emperor be crossed. After a long debate, the orc agreed to follow the caravan no longer chained to it. Isari retrieves two water bottles from the noble water genasis after negotiating to offer to protect them until Ramidava, but Shaq, while delivering the water to the now unchained orc, threatens him. The orc tried to strike the snake folk, but depleted of any form of energy, he missed. The journey was two days long, with storms, earthquakes and scorching heat added on the list of perils. Adam found common ground with an Urgenasi, Telefteos Arctos, or Last Bear, who had a desire to ascend to the stars and who recognized the star of Hebdom, her ancestors apparently being forever in the depth of the Hebdom lineage. He discovered that a follower of Lumeno could visit their ascended family with a powerful ritual. One time, when a star lost its path from the Ursa constellation, the star of Hebdom helped guide it back to safely. From that moment, the Ursas would always offer aid to the Hebdom line. Much like Last Bear visited Ursa Minor to seek guidance from them, Adam believed he could visit Hebdom's star. After 12 hours worth of travel, the caravan came to a halt. The six hours of dusk came with a scorching hot sand and a searing heat wave made it excruciatingly difficult to breathe, even causing exhaustion. The party soon realized that water was not only a necessity but also the most expensive commodity around, quickly draining their finances. Out of thin air, a wildfire started to encircle the caravan. While Isari flew around trying to warn everyone of the immediate dangers, Pax, Adam and Shaq were already trying to soften the flames and put the fires out to little effect. The noble water genasis called upon Isari to fulfill her promise to protect them, while Isari tried to take them to safety and Pax formed an ice shield around them. A cascade of boulders started falling on Adam, bludgeoning him and Last Bear. Adam tried to save Telefteos with flying magic, while Isari picked both of them up and flew them towards safety. But when Pax suddenly realized that casting spells brought on a plethora of consequences from the wildfires to plummeting meteorites. He urged everyone to find a way around using it. There were already two wildfires closing in from both sides of the caravan, burning people alive. Shaq then plucked a cart from the middle of the caravan to take it to a less perilous spot, making it a safe haven for the remaining caravaneers, but he also decided to take nourishment into his own hands, consuming the blood found in the scorching caravans. The burning hot sun was so powerful that it caused the survivors to combust into flames, including Adam, who fell unconsciously to the ground, flames and smoke engulfing him. Isari tried to get him further from the wildfire, while Pax joined her in an attempt to heal young Hebdom. Isari then plunged towards an incoming meteor to reduce the impact, but she severely fell the full hit of it. Defeated, the remaining survivors tried to move away from the scorching flames, just waiting for the fire to die down. Out of over 200 travelers, 
only a mere half a dozen managed to keep their lives, albeit not without scars and burns. While Isari beautifully commemorated the fallen ones, Adam was determined to find the correlation between the flames and magic. Nighttime arrived in the Redlands, with lights flickering all around and strange howls creeping up on the survivors. While talking to Last Bear, Adam discovered that the people of the Redlands believed that over 400 years ago, when the Astrals were freed, the sun no longer obeyed Lumino, taking its free will and using it towards destruction and punishment. After the six hours of dusk, the party set on foot through the desert at night while Isari tried to commune with the other constellations in search of guidance, but the stars seemed terrified of something lingering, the unknown that encompassed the nothingness and mortality of the material plane. The star Sirius showed Isari a vision of Ramidava being engulfed by a shadow that was slowly spreading. While discussing with the constellations, the star of Hebdom sought Isari to impart his wisdom, subtly making her understand it was imperative that Adam received protection. The journey was long and harrowing, but they had finally reached the gates of Ramidava. The city stood defiantly against the harsh landscape, its high walls constructed from red sandstone shimmering in the midday sun like a fortress of flames. While stepping into the citadel, Adam told Pax to postpone the meeting for the following day to give him a chance to commune with Hebdom, with the help of Last Bear, who could assist with the ritual preparations. The two went off to gather the required items for the ritual, while Adam's affection for Telefteos grew every time he would gaze into her starry eyes. Through the narrow winding streets, amongst the once vibrantly colored stone buildings, now dulled by the unforgiving sun, the Golden Guards, a group of imposing orcs clad in mist-matched heavy armor, found the group and requested Isari and the rest to present themselves at the palace. From the market square, a dusty path lined with towering pillars led to the palace of Ramidava, a structure that stood out not for its beauty but for its oppressive presence. The edifice was less of a palace and more of a fortified shelter. They arrived at the entrance to the throne room. The heavy wooden doors with the symbols of Lumino revealed a chamber that assembled courtiers and nobles within, their eyes turning towards the adventurers. The throne stood over a bridge of gold and atop the king was already awaiting them. He immediately started interrogating them about their business in Ramidava and Isari conveyed that they wished to speak to his majesty about the war but she requested their audience to be postponed for one day. However, before the party had a chance to retreat to a well-deserved rest, the king ordered the guards to bring a cage in the throne room, snidely asking, is this yours? While well, the contents of the cage baffled the group. This was the recap for episode 26 of Vim, as told by the Book of Recollections. I am Count Bear, your Vim recap narrator. If you'd like to join us as Vim The Tale of Immortality premieres, tune in on Sunday at 5 p.m. UTC on youtube.com slash at Dicelvania. New recaps drop every Friday evening. And remember, every subscribe keeps the magic alive. Thanks for sticking with us. Good day, good night, and don't let the vampires bite.